Hello, this is a brief overview of the first chapter in our book on kinematics. So we start the year with a review of kinematics. So you should have seen most of this in your first physics course. If you haven't taken one, don't worry. Um, we're going to go over it in class as well as right here. So we've talked about it a little bit already. Um, we have some simple equations though that we use in kinematics. So when we're talking about velocity, Velocity has the equation of V is the change in position over time. So anytime I change my position, I have a velocity. Be careful to notice that it's a change in position, not total distance. So velocity is what's called a vector. Vectors have magnitude and direction, which means that this is also displacement, because it is also a vector, it's not distance. Uh, if we're using distance in our measurement, what we're actually calculating is speed. So we're looking at velocity in a direction at a certain magnitude. We have acceleration for the basic equation. So that basic equation for acceleration is change in velocity over time. So if over a period of time I change my velocity, then I have an acceleration. This can include speeding down, speeding up or slowing down, and because of that, velocity is also a vector. Velocity and acceleration are both vectors. What this means, basically, is that either of these quantities can be negative. And when we say negative, it just means we're indicating direction. So the direction of my velocity and the direction of my acceleration could be in the negative direction. We'll give you an example. The way this is often portrayed is graphically. So if I use a graphical method to portray a velocity versus time graph. If my graph looks something like this, it's important that we know how to read that. What this is telling me is that I started at a positive velocity, I slowed down, when I hit here, I stopped moving, and then I continued traveling in a negative direction and speeding up in that negative direction. So just because I'm below the line does not mean I'm slowing down anymore. It just means that I've, I've now started traveling in the other direction and this is actually speeding up in that direction. So perhaps if you were throwing a ball up in the air, it starts with a large positive velocity, it stops at the peak, and then as gravity accelerates it downward, the velocity picks up in that negative direction. <coughs> now if I took that graph and I wanted to convert that to an acceleration graph, acceleration versus time, remember our units for acceleration are meters per second per second, time is always in seconds. If I wanted to say what that would look like, the important thing to realize is that the slope is constant the entire way. It's also important to notice the slope is negative. So I have a negative constant slope in my velocity versus time graph. So my acceleration versus time graph is also going to be negative and constant. And if we use the example from before, we know the acceleration of gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second per second. This is exactly where that would be on the line. Because the only thing that's accelerating it once it leaves my hand would be gravity. <laughs> After these equations, we start to branch out a little more and it becomes a little bit more difficult. The equations become a little bit longer. So there are three constant acceleration equations that we're going to use. We will use them to solve problems, but also to help explain our graphs. So our constant acceleration equations, V equals VO plus AT, V squared equals VO squared plus 2A X minus XO, and finally X equals XO plus VOT plus one half AT squared. Some of you may, may recognize these, they may look familiar. Um, later on when we do two-dimensional motion, we'll have a whole other set that have y's in them instead of x's. But for right now, when we're only traveling one dimension, we're just going to deal with these. And so you may guess what some of this stands for. Um, v 
is for velocity, and in this case it's final velocity. VO is your initial or original velocity. A is always our acceleration, and for us acceleration will always be constant the entire time, so it will never be changing. T is our time, always be in seconds. X represents our final position, we always measured in meters. And XO is our initial position, again always measured in meters. Very often we'll find that initial position is going to be zero. We're finding out how far something has traveled, and we can make the assumption that it started at an initial position of zero. <laughs> so these are your equations that we're really gonna deal with throughout the first chapter. These are your basic equations from general physics, from kinematics, that are going to make a difference for us. The important part from this chapter is that we learn how to portray what's happened. So we've talked a little bit about graphing and how to make these kinematic stacks, but we also have something called a motion map. Motion mapping is new uh, for pretty much everybody in class, but here's how it's going to work. You're going to have a line, and that line is going to represent time. So if I have something like this, and then Perhaps I have one, two, three, four, and five seconds. So each of these represents one second, one space in time. A motion map is just showing what's happening at each point in time. So for instance, if I have something traveling at a constant velocity, such as the carts we used the other day, at one second, this is my cart, and the arrow represents the velocity of the cart. Now at every second, it's going to have the same size arrow and it's going to be traveling the same distance because it's a constant velocity cart. So the velocity is never changing. The distance traveled is going to be the same every second that we go through. As things start to accelerate, we're going to start to see these lines get larger or smaller or change direction depending on what's happening. So this way of showing motion is called motion mapping. <coughs> when we motion map, we're indicating not only time, but placement or position. And then the arrow can represent velocity. If we want to have a second arrow, uh, not as important in this example, but if I had maybe a second color, the brown color here represents my acceleration. So I'm not accelerating. There's no acceleration happening. If there was, I could use the brown arrow to show that happening. I could also see my green arrow get larger as the velocity increased. Or again, the green arrow gets shorter as the velocity decreased. We're going to do a lot of motion mapping. This is a very simple way of showing the motion of objects. The final thing in this chapter would be gravity, and the idea of what gravity is. We use the word gravity a lot. What we're really meaning when we say gravity is one of two things. Either the acceleration of gravity, or gravitational force. For the first chapter, what we're really looking at is the acceleration of gravity. Because gravity is a field force, so it doesn't have to actually physically touch anything to, to be felt, we don't really, it's hard to imagine what it's like. At the surface of the Earth, the acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second per second. What we'll find later on is that gravitational force is going to be equal to mass times g. And in this case, and in most cases on the planet Earth, g is going to be 9.8 meters per second per second. So for right now, we're looking just at the acceleration of gravity being 9.8 meters per second per second. You may notice 
Are we saying to yourself, is this a vector? We've already said acceleration is a vector, so 9.8 meters per second per second is a vector. So you can indicate that by either saying down, or the much more common way to say it is nine, negative 9.8 meters per second per second to indicate that it's accelerating things in the downward direction. So with acceleration, it's always going to be factored into what we do. And we're going to use those equations we just had. Oftentimes, the acceleration we're talking about is going to be gravity. Thank you for watching. This has been Chapter 1. We'll move on to Chapter 2 next week.